Gather around, friends. I am so excited to share with you the things that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. This is a collection of binder junk journals that I have made. Um, I was inspired by my own junk journal that I've been using on uh, my YouTube channel, my garden journal, but I made these guys into different themes. So I do have some garden journals, but there's some other themed ones, but they're all using um, the upcycled binder books that you find in thrift stores and estate sales and stuff like that. So I will be posting these on my Etsy shop at 7 p.m. today, Thursday, Central Standard Time. So let me flip through and show you what I have. So I have a couple travel journals, a sewing journal, and then three garden journals. And I'm going to start with the travel journals. So the travel journals, I love making travel journals out of these binder books because they just work so well with the, the binder clips. I know as a, as a scrapbooker, I like to be able to put things in and out and especially with a travel book because you accumulate so much stuff as you're traveling. So this first one that I have was a family circle weekend crafts book. And when I got it, the only thing that it had um, it doesn't even have the date on it, but the only thing that it had inside were these amazing pockets. And so there is 10 of these that I have embellished in this book, but that was the only original pages that I had in this one. So my travel scrapbooks tend to be, my travel journals tend to be um, pretty scrapbook paper heavy because it's just, I don't know, it just works out that way. And a lot of times your travel photos um, are kind of busy. And so it just works out that scrapbook paper and cardstock uh, lend itself to work really well in travel journals. So this is just a couple of different views of this binder. And this is a vintage map that I have, some handmade paper and some um, ledger paper on the front. And then I stitched around um, to give it a little bit of embellishment. Okay, so for this, I have a lot of pockets. Um, a lot of just random papers, some maps from a vintage atlas, and then I have some tablet paper that I um, glued and folded together to make it a little bit strong. This is the first of the pockets, and I wanted to make these as um, global or as broad as possible so you could do what you wanted to them. So I just added a piece of scrapbook paper, some stitching to reinforce the um, little binder rings here, and then some sort of a little label sticker and then room for you to journal. Then a lot of journal cards and some nice thick scrapbook paper. Um, my beautiful friend Kimla, hello Kimla if you're watching, um, she sent me a glorious package of trim last week and it is just phenomenal. They, they're velvet, there's vintage ones, they're beaded, and so as soon as I got them, I had already finished this book, but I went back and I added some trim to each of these pages. So you're gonna get a little bit of trim on these pages. This is a sheet that I um, put in my travel journals, try to put them in my travel journals as much as I can, but this is a meal tracker. So this is just a place where you could write about the meals or the food that you eat some vintage um, ledger that I turned into a pocket and then added some book pages of some not so traditional ways to travel. And then I have um, some more maps from that vintage atlas and this becomes a fold out. Tried to match up some cute papers and not make it just like a worldwide travel journal, but it could be just traveling around your city, um, traveling, you know, in, in your town, or it could be, maybe this is just a collection of adventures that you take. Um, some dictionary pages that had some travel words or some words that I felt like could lend itself to a travel journal. Now, some of these pages I um, intended for you to scrapbook on. So like the thicker pages, the card stock and the pockets and stuff. But then other pages I added in, you could easily just take those out and cut them up and use them in collage. So like this would be a page. You could either scrapbook right on this page or you could cut it up and use the words and the pictures um, in some collage. 
and I like that because I don't I don't know how everybody scrapbooks you know some people just like to lay their pictures straight down on the pages and other people like to get fancy and do lots of collage and art and painting and things so I like to be able to have journals that you can you can do you can use everything um, and you can get creative and kind of push yourself and and see how you want to use the materials um, that you were given okay getting to the end of this one here and then at the very end I have another one of those pockets and this is a time card and I didn't show you the one up at the front but it's the same thing it's a time card just a different version um, which would be a nice place to put like you know what you did throughout the week so that is travel journal number one my second travel journal is a vintage Better Homes and Gardens um, decorators book, and I don't have any here to show you. I think I've used them all, but this is, if you're familiar with these books, this is the black and white one, and I think this is the decorator book they went to in the 70s. Before that, their books were um, green, and um, so this was this is a black and white one. And so I just did some painting and put some maps um, on here kind of left a little bit of the cover showing through and again used a lot of scrapbook um, ephemera because it just kind of makes it easier to blend your photos okay so in here starts off with a pocket and then just a little um, vintage um, I found these cards they're kind of crazy they've got the weirdest I had a whole box of them they got the weirdest little things on there um, like their little prompts of to like this one is for trips how four phases of an efficient trip so they had a whole travel um section of these cards so i stuck a few of them in here and then um just a nice little card right here at the beginning and then i ran across some of these slides they're from china so i incorporated a couple of these you don't have to go to china to use this book but it's just kind of fun to have something whimsical and and random and then in this one because i didn't have the cool pockets in that this one like i did the other one i had to make my own so i just made pockets out of maps and again i used maps of the united states i used maps of the world i used maps of different cities so you don't have to um, be limited because you're going to i don't know virginia and this has um, postcards from you know uh, ephemera from like a ship or something it doesn't don't be intimidated by that this is not intended to be used literally um, my journals, I like to use them and just kind of interpret them however however I feel like. I like the whimsy of having weird things and random things and things that don't um, match up. I think that's I think that's part of the fun and part of the the quirkiness of of art journaling versus scrapbooking. Scrapbooking was just very literal um, and I just love the freedom of you know, doing art journaling and doing journals like this where you can just kind of interpret and have symbolism and make your journal be whatever you want it to be. It can be a collection of um, what's in your brain, which could be kind of cool. Okay, oops, sorry, my page got stuck together. So again, I put some of that really cool trim on here that Kimla sent me. Some of my glue got a little glue bob blob on there. Okay, um, this is like a CD holder, and I put some of that trim on there, and then put a little journaling card. But you could put a photo in there. Now, for my travel journals, um, I always like to section them off and go ahead and make the sections for you. I didn't do that in the previous one, but I did do it in this one. And so I'll go through and I'll show you the sections here in just a second. But I'm the reason why I did that is because when you travel, when you go on vacation, you know how overwhelming it is when you come home with all this ephemera and all of these photos and all of these memories and how are you going to organize them. So I tried to make that easy for you um, and go ahead and make some sections in my travel journals. And so I just use my typewriter and I type out little labels and then I go and glue them 
on the um, index cards that come with the uh the the book which for this one it's decorating themed so i know you're like but this is a travel book i understand but that's that's the cool part you're gonna you're not gonna do this literal it's gonna be totally you know just random and weird so um yeah that's 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 how come i like these and that's how come i use them so much is because they're just so fun to interpret and you know, kind of scratch your head and be like, wow, how, how does that connect with one another? Okay, so let me show you the sections. Here's a couple more tags that I have. Okay, so the sections that I have in my travel books, and I'll turn them this way so I can read it. So I have a section called Plans We Made, How We Traveled, Where We Went, Stops along the way, what we did, who we met, what we saw, food we ate. This section would be totally full in my journal because I love food. Adventures we had, memories we made, and I think that's it. So, yeah. So that is travel journal number two. Now I'm going to move on to my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite one. I love this. Um, these sewing books are hard to come by. I have a hard time trying to find, or I have a hard time finding these. There's just not, uh, I just don't seem to find very many. So whenever I do, I just, I just love them so much. Um, I didn't do anything to the cover except clean it up. And the reason why is because it's just so beautiful as it is. Um, and I didn't want to over embellish. Sometimes you can go too far. And this was one of those times where I just wanted to leave it the way it was. And you absolutely, if you purchase this, you could, you can embellish the cover, um, as you see fit. So this book, I have cram jammed full of trim and fabric and dress patterns. And, oh my gosh, it just makes me excited to, um, to go through this one. Okay. So some tags here at the front and this was from a dress pattern um, a McCall's dress pattern book so this is a nice thick card stock and then I put some flock wallpaper in here so I love this this is a fold out that I made um, and it has three pockets in it so the first pocket is right here and I just put this old fallen apart dress pattern package in there and you could use that for collage. Then this is a, another pocket. Let me see if I can get in here. So this is another pocket. And in here I just put some book pages from a sewing book that you could either journal on or you could cut apart and use in collage. And then over on this side, I have another pocket where I stuck in um, a tag about a violet. And then it just folds closed. And then it has this side right here and it's been stitched and reinforced and all kinds of good stuff. So the index card I left blank. If you've watched my video on my garden journal, I am leaving um, them blank because I want you to be able to put whatever you want, you know, change the section or use this to do some collage. And then I kind of followed a pattern. I'll have um, the index card, I'll have a blank paper from the, uh, the original book, and I tried to get the prettiest ones that had the, the best little images. And again, you can use this to journal on, collage on, or you could use this to cut apart and use in your collage. Then I have some sort of a whimsical page that I have glued to the back of a page from the book. So you'll get the page from the book and then you'll get some sort of paper. And I did all pattern paper on the front. It's nice and flat and just, um, I stitched down the side. So it's thicker. This would be a great one to um, glue on or to paint or to journal on. And then I stuck some sort of a tag or fabric down the side. Then you'll have a piece of scrapbook paper and you'll have um, some sort of a pocket or a page that I have made from another sewing book. So this is um, a sewing book that I made into, a, um, pages that I made into a pocket. And then I just stuck a journaling card in there. 
So lots of places for you to tuck in all kinds of little trinkets and drawings and ideas that you have. And so I'll see if I can go through this quickly so you can see it all. So I love this pocket right here. This was a stretch and sew. Um, it was a large envelope and I just cut it in half, stitched down the sides, stitched up the sides because it was kind of in bad shape, added a little um, embellishment to it, and then stuck in a card, a journaling card, that actually matches the cardstock and scrapbook paper that I used. Oops, let's see if I can get it in there. Oh goodness, oh, the card is stuck. Okay. Some kitty cat fabric with little spools of thread. This is two pages from a sewing book that I have, a small little sewing book that I have, but the pages are really um, cottony and, and kind of thick, and I just, I don't know, I feel like um, colored pencil would be beautiful on this, maybe some collage. So you could do whatever you wanted with this. I turned it into a little pocket in the back, but again, you could cut it up or you could use it as your background paper. This is a fold out. So I love doing sewing things because it reminds me of my, my grandma. And um, I just went to my mom's yesterday and was looking through some old um, photos and stuff. I grabbed some photos and some scrapbooks and stuff from my grandma. But um, as my mom was going through, as we were going through the photo albums, she was showing me there were four four girls my mom had three sisters and my grandma made um their dresses so she was showing me like a dress that she wore to her eighth grade dance and it was so pretty um and my grandma had made that she had made all their barbie doll clothes she made their dresses that they wore to dances and stuff and she would take um like my one of my um, aunts, she would take one of their dresses and then she would alter it for each, you know, of the sisters after that. So the one my mom was wearing um, was actually one of my other aunt's dresses that had been altered. I love the trim on this. So whenever I do sewing books or anything that even just sitting down to my sewing machine, even though I sew on paper and my grandma sewed on fabric, it just reminds me um, of my grandma. And by the way, this table that I'm actually filming on, this was my grandma's. Um, and so I had my sewing machine set on it. Oh, I love, love those ladies there. Had my sewing machine setting on it. Um, and then I rearranged my studio a little bit and um, used this for, decided that it was gonna be better as my filming table so it got moved over here and I had to go and get another sewing table so um, but it was kind of cool having my sewing machine on the table that was my grandma's so earlier I pulled out um, a piece uh, a card like this and it said boys and girls this was a book um, and I loved it that because it had like learning to sew and ironing and I thought those are cute little tags I can slip into these pockets and you know again you can use them however you you want but i just thought that was fun to add a little bit of whimsy um to this book and then back here oh there's a little bit of glue back here i just took um that thick cover from that pattern book and just kind of made a little flap here so this is my sewing book and this is tugging at my heartstrings. This garden book is very similar to the one that I'm actually using in my garden journal series. Um, this is actually an, an older version. I'm using a newer version, but this was an older version that I had. I didn't do anything to the cover because again, it was just so beautiful and, and I just didn't want to add too much. I wanted the original beauty to show through and you can see it's yellowed because it's old and I'd like to think that, um, it was well used and and that some some little old lady um, used this and and um, it helped her do her gardening so I tried to set this up similar it's actually really similar I tried to use the same papers and things like that um, to the one that I'm using in my 
my garden journal series. So I have some tags, some paper. Um, I used a lot of wallpaper in this one. And then the wallpaper I had, um, I scored a really big bunch of wallpaper. It's not um, probably really old wallpaper. It's probably like 90s, 1990s wallpaper, but it had a lot of the seagrass wallpaper and I, I love the texture. So I added some of that in here um, and just made a little pocket here at the front and some more of that trim that Kimla sent me. And then kept the setup the same. So I'll have a index card. I'll have a original book page with some, and this time I used scrapbook paper on the back of it with some trim sewn down. Um, here is, if you've watched my video on, I can't remember if it was Owl Moon or, oh no, it was the, um, once about a time. That's right. Um, I used a, in that video, I used a book cover, a dust jacket from a cookbook, and I actually scrapbooked on it. So I made one for this journal. It's a freezer cookbook, and I did the similar style, put some fabric, and this is really stiff because I was afraid this um, book jacket was kind of old. I was afraid it was going to fall apart, so I really glued this heavily on here. But I went ahead and made your pocket for you, stuck a little card in there. And then left this flap um, open so you could do whatever you wanted um, with this one. And then there's just a blank page from the book where it's blank on both sides. So you could add what you needed to it or use it as collage. And then just some piece of paper, some random little piece of paper, might be wallpaper, um, that I've sewn into a pocket. So it kind of follows the same pattern that the last book did. This is a little map of a butterfly garden. I added some weird things in this one too. I thought it was kind of cool. I wanted to, to see um, if I could push some of your guys' creativity and, and see how you use this. So I added some coloring book pages, but then I also added some um, vintage yearbook pages. So it'll be interesting um, to see how you guys use that stuff. I'd love to hear about, if you get this journal, I'd love to hear about how you use those yearbook pages. This is um, a page from another book. I think this was a house plants book um, or a botany book so there's some pages from different garden books in here also and then the little pockets that i made in the journal that i'm using so it's got house plants on one side and cardstock on the other and i just filled them with some wrap uh wallpaper I almost said wrapping paper um, if you saw my last video i used a poem um and so this was the off cut or the 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 other page or the leftover page from that poem so I stuck that in it was it was also on rain so I thought that might be something cool that you could use pocket with some just some little papers and stuff mm, book page wrapping paper wallpaper just like I used in my journal the same cardstock I used in my journal. Added some darker colors in this one. I thought that might be kind of interesting. Um, a field guide page about birds. <clears throat> um, I love this little page. This was an index page or a table of contents page from a storybook and it's got little fairies on it and I thought that might be kind of cute if you have um, a whimsical garden or if you like um, whimsy in your garden. That might be a good page to use to document that. Um, this is a page from another bird field guide and then just some scraps of the scrapbook paper that I've used. It's always nice to have some of that coordinating paper when you're working in your journal so that it kind of helps to tie everything together. The beautiful photographs from the original book. Some more coloring book paper. Oh, this is cool. So this is a um, 1961, and I don't know what, Flower and Garden Magazine. So this is on roses, and I just took both pages and folded them, um, trimmed them down so that they can fit in here. But this might be, if you're a person that loves roses, this might be something awesome for you to use, um, or just even keep it tucked into this little page right there. It just kind of looks pretty. looks like it 
it's meant to be there. I added a zipper. Don't know why. It's just kind of, it's kind of there. And oh, this is kind of cute too. So these were some old tablet paper that had. Um, I think I had printed these out one year when I did summer school. Um, we were going to go out and identify leaves on trees. And so this was just some of that leftover um, paper that my kids used. Some more wallpaper. Another book page. And then this is some of that seagrass wallpaper. So I love the color on that one. It coordinates because I used the um, off cut of it at the very beginning. And this is great for scrapbooking right here um, because it's nice and thick. And then I love this pocket right here. So this pocket um, has two of these garden cards. And then I just sewed some paper to it, some note paper, and then added some trim. So there's two of these in here and then yeah so this is the first garden book all right now for the last two garden books so these guys started off as pillsbury uh cookbooks and they were both from the i think one was 60s and one was 70s so i painted them obviously um because i wanted this to be garden theme not necessarily cookbook theme so this one has a lot of texture to it um it has some old 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 wallpaper that i've glued on here it's got paint chips and lots of layers of paint so i just love touching this one i added a few little stamps and kept some of the like the little details from the cookbook is actually the original cookbook is peeking through and just for just no reason at all i have some vintage map left over from my travel journal so i put that on there and then just put a stamp of a an old um it was actually like a seal. I, they didn't call them stickers back then, but they were. It's an old seal of a bird. So there's one right there. Okay. So I love these books. Um, both of them are kind of the same. This one is more um, all kinds of garden, and then the other one I'm going to show you is more. I feel like kind of formal. It's more about flowers and stuff. So tag in the front with some wallpaper or uh, wrapping paper background, some flocked wallpaper that I turned into a pocket. So flocked wallpaper, this is older, this is newer wallpaper, and I just sewed it together with some trim. Look at this fun little trim here, I love that. So I added that to the bottom. And then check this out. Each of these last two garden journals have a little baggie here that I stuffed full of. Long time ago, I got this box um, art flower box. I don't even know what it was. You were just supposed to, I guess, make flowers. So it was really old. I actually got two of them. And what it had in it were all the little components. It's almost like crepe paper. All the little components to make these flowers. So they've just been sitting around forever and ever and ever. So what I did was um, I just took a little baggie and I loaded it up with these little flower parts and some of the leaves that were in here. So you can use this as, um, I wanna put some lace trim in there too. You can use this as collage material um, in your garden journal. So yeah, this, this one has a baggie and it is full of all those goodies. And then I just tied it <clears throat> with some trim here so you could easily get um, in and out. And then I just tucked it in this front pocket, added some beautiful trim. And then again, it's set up the same way. Index card, I have some ledger paper with just some field guides and stamps and book pages that are, that are um, clipped to it. A blank piece of paper from the original garden book, so you can do whatever you want with that. Um, a piece of card stock. And then I went really heavy on wrapping paper. I have a huge stash of wrapping paper and I just love being able to use it. So this one is kind of a more fun, whimsical garden journal. So I added these little um, baby pictures of these little naked baby wrapping paper. I just, I don't know, I, for some reason they just seemed like fairies in a garden. So I added that with this beautiful trim right here um, on the back of an original book page. And then I just follow the same setup um, throughout the book. 
This is a cool little pocket where it's a double, like it's a pocket and then it's also a card and this is some flocked wallpaper. And then if there were trim um, or if there was trim or leftover pieces of the wrapping paper or wallpaper, I tried to tuck them in here so that you could use them. Oh, oops, sorry, I didn't get to show you that. Oh, okay, so this is a book page. I added three um, book pages, children's book pages, into each of these last two journals. And I tried to put some sort of a garden type of theme. So these had these little lambs on them. And again, this would be something you could use to actually scrapbook on, or you could cut this apart and use it in your collage. Some velvet trim love this wrapping paper. I've been wanting to use that forever. These are some cute little like Cracker Jack box. Um, I scored a whole bunch of these at an estate sale a couple weeks ago and um, they're not the, I've got some newer ones that I got like at Dollar Tree or something. These are, these were like older. I don't know how old they are, but they were older. Um, and this lady had a whole box of them. So I stuck those in. They'd make great little collage material. So there's a couple of pages from my um, book on birds in here, and it's a giant book on birds. So I stuck those in and just kind of folded them. And then I sewed in a little envelope and just tucked a card and some wallpaper in there. I think there's two of those in here. Love that trim love wrapping paper. I am just a sucker for wrapping paper. I just, I can't, ugh. Wrapping paper gets me every time. This is just a little pamphlet um, about lighting in your outdoor living and then it has a little zucchini rice casserole that um, this sweet little lady had written a couple notes about so I just tucked that in. This is just a little card. Here is another book page. This one on the back of it was the hare and the tortoise and um, I thought that kind of was interesting that you could add into your journal as collage material. Love that wrapping paper. Kitty cats. This was a poem and it has a lot of garden fairies around it. And so I just thought it's by Dorothy Hall. Thought that was beautiful and could be used in this journal as well. Of course, the house plants love house plants. They used to have a lot of house plants. Um, and then I had kids and I felt like I couldn't take care of the house plants and my kids at the same time. So I got rid of the um, house plants <laughs> and they went to a good home. They went to my cousin. She took them all. Some newer, um, I think this was probably 1980s maybe, um, some fairy wrapping paper. It might have been 70s, I don't know. More book pages from that bird book. And then at the very end, I've just got a little um, journaling card here with some trim. All right, so that is the garden journal that has a bird on the front of it. Last one. So this one I made a little more formal. Um, I was I found this picture of roses, which was an original book page to the garden journals. Again, this is a Pillsbury uh, cookbook, and I just painted it, added um, lots of different paper and trims. There's some music paper, there's some dress paper here, and then, um, some cute, cute little vintage, um, oh, it's just like a yarn type of trim with some lace or embroidery on it. So this one I felt like it was just more formal, more flowery, more roses. So the trims I used in this book, I, I went really heavy on the lace in this one. Okay, so it's set up exactly the same as the one you just saw. The only difference is that I just used different papers and different trims, but basically you're gonna have the same setup. Book pages, 
Love this poem for by Margaret Wise Brown on pansies. Tried to add a lot of things that had to do with roses or brightly colored flowers. This is a little piece of lace that I folded over and it created a little pocket on one side and another little pocket on the other side. So I just tucked in some paper that um, I had left over and you can use. Love that wrapping paper. These are just a couple little, there's a couple of these little tags that I made of some rip uh, paper that's left over in here and then just turned it into a tag and just kind of tucked it up underneath here added a little bit of lace more wrapping paper cuts a little time sheet and the colors in this journal i i made them pretty bold um, with the reds and i was just thinking flowers and and roses and tulips and things like that so there's a lot of bright colors um, in this journal two poems from a children's book christina rossetti it, oh i know i said langston hughes earlier in one of my videos was my favorite poet but christina rossetti she's she's my favorite poet also so i stuck a couple of those in there Some dress pattern tissue because that's kind of a theme of this book. It's on the cover, so you could use this to collage. Um, this wrapping paper is really thick and it's textured, so I thought that was kind of cool. So this is a pocket I made. This isn't wrapping paper. I don't know what this kind of paper is, but anyway, it was nice and thick, so I turned it into a pocket, put a little velvet trim here, and then I just loaded this pocket up with all kinds of um, goodies. So there's a tag that you could use for journaling. There is um, an offcut of one of the original garden book pages. Just a journaling card, some wrapping paper, and one of those little um, like Cracker Jack game pages. So lots of lace in this one. Fold outs, little pocket over here with journaling card. Another one of those cards with a, um, an envelope with a, um, I think that's like a Project Life card. This is a poem on kittens, and then on the back was one of my favorite poems that I used to use when I taught elementary school um, about the squirrel, so I stuck that poem in there. Added some black color to this journal too. There's another one of those cards, those tags. Oh, love this paper. And the something about the red, the yellow, and that lime green picture right there. Just, I don't know, love that, how that worked out. Didn't plan for that. And I like all these, um, I tried to get a lot of black and white illustrations because the wrapping paper was so bright. I wanted to have like, you would have bright on one side and then maybe more muted on the other. So I tried to do that in this journal and the one that I just showed you. Sometimes you, I love color, but sometimes you need to tone it down a little bit. Sometimes I need to tone it down a little bit. All right, baby friends. I hope you enjoyed that flip through. I hope it was not too long. I am going to post these on Etsy at seven o'clock Central Standard Time. I appreciate you guys taking the time and hanging out with me. And um, as always, if you like this, uh, give me a thumbs up or subscribe, share it with a friend, leave me a comment. Have a great day. Bye.